The movie opens up inside a passenger plane, IA-42, which is flying from Dallas to London. The pilot, Captain William Strong, is briefing the situation of the flight and mentions that they should reach their destination in about seven hours. He also says that the weather conditions are perfect and that they will not face any hindrances along the way. Captain Strong is accompanied by co-pilot Daniel Prentice, with whom he has flown several flights together. As the duo is talking, a strange anomaly suddenly occurs. The electronics inside the cockpit start flickering, and this prompts Captain Strong to call for help. Fortunately, the ground control assures him that they don't have any mechanical problems and that the skies ahead are clear. With this, the pilots get relieved, but just when they reach a bit ahead, they notice a gigantic storm brewing. Taken aback, Captain Strong immediately contacts the ground control again, as the latter had just mentioned that the skies would be clear. However, to their surprise, the man mentions that the storm appeared out of nowhere. Left with no options, Captain Strong urges the passengers to remain in their seats and proceeds to get through the storm. Co-pilot Daniel is unsure about the idea, but the captain tells him it's the only way. After this, both of them brace through the intense turbulence while the passengers scream in fear. Fortunately, after a bit of a scare, the plane passes through the storm and enters smooth skies. While the passengers breathe a sigh of relief, the pilots are stunned to see the skies completely dark as if it has become night. Moreover, all the signals inside the plane are also cut off. Now, only the radar is working and all communications to the ground control are lost. Despite this, they assume that it's just a malfunction caused by the storm and continue proceeding forward. However, when they fail to find a single aircraft on their radar for the next 30 minutes, they start getting suspicious. Captain Strong decides to fly the plane in a loop, aiming to find someone around. Before doing so, he calls one of the flight attendants, Cameron, and asks her to settle everyone in their seats, as they will be making a descent. In the next scene, the pilots start descending as per their plan, and just then, they notice something on their radar. At first, the captain is happy, but when Daniel mentions that it's not a normal aircraft, he starts getting scared. Lo and behold, they see a large number of fighter planes bombarding a city in what appears to be a war. This sends the passengers into a state of panic, but the flight attendants quickly calm them down, mentioning that everything will be fine. Meanwhile, inside the cockpit, the pilots are equally stunned, but just as they they investigate the situation, a bunch of fighter planes start circling them. As they are about to be attacked, they use their radar to get away from the firing line and again ascend into the sky. With this, the danger gets averted for the time being, but the passengers start getting more anxious by the minute. Some of them demand that Cameron reveal what's happening, but she calmly assures them that everything is under control. In the meantime, Captain Strong fails to connect with anyone on the ground, and since he has no clue about their current location, he decides to descend once again. The plan is to inspect their surroundings and deduce the exact location they're in. Daniel immediately disagrees, as he is wary of the threat looming below. However, when the captain mentions that they'll soon run out of fuel, he agrees. Meanwhile, two passengers, who are revealed to be historians, Dale and Bennett, find the situation odd and decide to inform the captain about it. They then sneak up inside the cockpit and inform Captain Strong that the fighter planes they just witnessed have not been made since 1945. In fact, they are the Luftwaffe, which were owned and operated by, wait for it, the Nazis. Hearing this, Captain Strong becomes enraged, and he orders Cameron to escort the men out of the cockpit. But Bennett keeps mentioning that they have somehow time-traveled back to 1940, amidst World War II. The historians find out that the plane has lost all signal, and because of this, Captain Strong reluctantly gives them 30 seconds to explain their story. After this, the guys reveal that the plane is failing to catch any signals because there were not many radio towers on the Western Allied Front in 1940. They also mention that the plane flew through the bombing of saint Isaire, which was a calculated Nazi attack on the west coast of France in 1940. Meanwhile, the speculations simply anger the captain even more, and he assumes that the historians are fooling around with him. He then sends them away to their seats, but not before telling them to keep their mouths shut. In the next scene, the pilots once again lower the air aircraft, hoping to catch any radio signals. Luckily, they manage to contact a British guy, who immediately asks the captain to identify himself. Captain Strong obliges, and also mentions that they need immediate help. But the guy on the radio, Nigel, is skeptical about their motives. He believes that it is impossible to catch a radio signal from an airplane, which is flying at a high altitude. 
and rightly so. During the Second World War, the British did not have such advanced equipment to intercept long-range transmissions. With time running out, Captain Strong begs Nigel for help, but the latter is confused about their identity. As a result, Captain Strong asks Nigel for the date, and he replies that it's the 17th of June, 1940. This shocks the captains, and they finally realize that the historians were not lying. However, they are still unable to convince Nigel that they are a commercial plane. With no options left, Captain Strong calls in the historians and lets them talk to Nigel. Bennett deduces a rough location through his assumptions and also mentions that they have passed the spot where the Lancastria was sunk. Hearing this, Nigel is taken aback, as in his time, the Lancastria is still active. He then decides to head to his superior and confirm if the guys are speaking the truth. Back inside the airplane, a passenger overhears the conversation inside the cockpit and gets wind of the situation. He then decides to take matters into his own hands and gets up from his seat. Following this, he announces to everyone that the airplane has somehow traveled back into 1940 and they are now over France. He also mentions that Hitler's army is currently invading the country and proposes that they all work together to stop him. Thinking he's probably just trying to go viral on TikTok, they call him a lunatic. However, some of them agree to join him. With this, the newly formed group decides to hijack the cockpit and make a crash landing, but they are soon stopped by a couple of US soldiers. Soon, a fight breaks out and even the flight attendants join in on the action. Luckily, the bad guys are subdued and they are tied to their seats so that they don't cause any further disturbance. Meanwhile, Nigel again contacts the pilots and reveals that their information about the Lancastria was right. He also mentions that the information helped them rescue a lot of people. As a result, Nigel finally trusts Captain Strong and decides to help him land the plane. But for that, he will need their exact location. Captain Strong and the historians give a rough estimate of their location, but it is still not enough. Hence, the co-pilot comes up with a plan to turn back their lights so that they can be visible to the British soldiers. Sadly, as soon as he does so, the Germans find them first, and a bunch of fighter planes start surrounding them. They start pelting the aircraft with bullets, sending the passengers into a state of total chaos. Despite this, Captain Strong doesn't panic, and he tries his best to avert the attack. He then comes up with a plan to lose the Luftwaffe. On the count of three, he drops the plane at a very steep angle, and as it is about to hit the ground, he pulls it up. The Germans also follow, but since they don't have advanced planes, they fail to rise up and hence crash to the ground. You would think trained fighter pilots would know better. In the next scene, it is revealed that Daniel got shot during the attack, and the aircraft is reeling with several holes in it. Cameron quickly plugs the holes and administers first aid to Daniel. Following this, Captain Strong finally decides to confront the scared passengers. He asks one of the flight attendants to take over the wheel and heads out. There, he reveals the entire situation and also mentions that they are trying their best to land the plane. However, the recent attack damaged the plane's landing gear, so they will require some volunteers to fix it. At first, everyone stays silent as they are scared to death, but soon, two brave passengers, Teresa and Hector, agree to volunteer. Soon, the trio heads down the tail section of the aircraft and starts investigating. Teresa, being an engineer, quickly identifies the problem and starts fixing it. After a while, she is successful, but there is one last obstacle. The landing gear is jammed with something. Hence, in order to fix it, someone will have to go down there and remove the object. Being the brave man that he is, Captain Strong immediately agrees to risk his life, even though he's the only guy that can fly the damn plane. But Hector smartly insists that he do it since the captain is of more importance. He then slowly makes his way down to the landing gear and, using a hammer, fixes the problem. Later, Captain Strong heads back to the cockpit and again descends to establish connection with Nigel. After he does so, he mentions that the aircraft has only 80 minutes worth of fuel left in it, so they need help immediately. As they are talking, two German aircraft suddenly attack the airplane. This time, they even fire missiles, which blows out all the windows of the plane. With all the passengers in a state of shock, Captain Strong comes up with another plan to evade the enemies. He uses his only form of equipment, the radar, to track the enemies. He then cleverly tricks the Germans and makes them crash into each other, hence saving everyone's lives. After the close call, Daniel realizes that they can't keep descending, as it will reveal their location to the Germans. Just when all hope seems to be lost, Bennett comes up with an idea. He proposes that they cut off the airplane radar and send it over to Nigel so that he can use it and guide them through to safety. The captains are hesitant about the plan, but they have no other choice.
voice, so they agree. Following this, they re-establish contact with Nigel and brief him on their plan. Nigel is surprised that they're willing to give up on their best weapon, but he nonetheless agrees to help. The pilots then agree to hand over the radar at a specific location and start preparing for it. In the next scene, the flight attendants start searching through the luggage haphazardly, hoping to find something useful that can cushion the landing. Just then, an old man hands them over some toy parachutes, which he had supposedly picked up for his grandkids. After this, the preparations for the drop begin. They quickly wrap the radar in a thick layer of clothes and suspend it with the parachutes. After a while, they reach the designated spot, chuck the device out of the plane, and inform Nigel about the drop. Sadly, the package lands right near the Swiss-German border, and it is discovered by the Nazis first. Right then, some members of the British Army arrive there, and an intense shootout ensues between the two parties. Fortunately, the Nazis are killed, and the British take the package to Nigel. Wasting no time, he quickly sets up the radar inside his base and starts operating it. He then guides Captain Strong with the help of the device until they reach a safe place. By this time, the aircraft is running incredibly low on fuel, and the captain requests Nigel Nigel to find a landing spot as soon as possible. As he is skimming through the place, he suddenly spots a large blip on the radar, which doesn't look like any aircraft. Surprisingly, the blip turns out to be another storm, similar to the one which teleported them into this world. Seeing this, Captain Strong suggests they go through it, as they don't have enough fuel to land elsewhere. He then bids Nigel goodbye and thanks him for his assistance. After this, he announces to the passengers that they will be going through another storm, and if they are lucky, they will meet each other soon. Captain Strong then braces himself and, along with Daniel, plunges the aircraft into the storm. Fortunately, their plan works, and the aircraft is teleported back to present day in Berlin. The ground control there contacts them and mentions that the whole runway has been cleared for them to land. At last, after six hours of chaos and terror, flight IA-42 finally lands. In the final scene of the movie, all the passengers celebrate the landing and start heading out one by one. After a while, Captain Strong also gets out of the cockpit and finds the same old man sitting alone inside the plane. He appears to be writing a book titled The Radar System That Saved Europe. The movie ends as the old man is revealed to be none other than Nigel himself. This movie was based on a true story. Just kidding. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.